Hello and welcome back to New Comic Book Day here at Comic Vantage. Like I said, today is New Comic Book Day. It's that special day of the week. And this is the week of October 24th, 2018. What this episode is all about is I pick up some books for the week, I give them a good read, and I come back and I give you a spoiler-filled review. So if you don't want spoilers, back out now. Or the second option is there are timestamps in the description, so you can just click the books you don't want spoiled. All right, so let's get started. First book this week, Army of Darkness Halloween Special. Now, there are a lot of nice and scary books this week, just in time for Halloween. Really, really happy about that. Also, my review this week is seriously indie heavy. I think I have one mainstream title. That's it. Just one. The rest are indies. All right. Army of Darkness here. Look at Ash giving out candy to the ghoulie kids. <laughs> I love this. Evil Dead is one of my absolutely favorite, favorite horror movies of all time. I loved it growing up. Still love it to this day. Evil Dead 2, amazing. Army of Darkness was great. Even the TV show, absolutely love it. Ash is a great character. Here we have him being all narcissistic and Ash-like. Although I am bummed out that Bruce Campbell has said that he will no longer reprise the role. So, you know. Although I've had also had the pleasure of meeting Bruce Campbell twice in my life. Both were a lot of fun. So... Here we have Ash going on a ghost tour, being told all about the uh, Blackbeard's pirate ship that came into Charleston Harbor. And I love this. He's trying to meet up with a woman from a dating app. His name is Big Boomstick 69 on the dating app. <laughs> Book is filled with tons of crass humor. So if that's not your thing, I would say skip it. But it is just fun. I mean, what else can you expect? You're not going to get like... Macbeth out of this. It is Ash. It is Army of Darkness. Here we go. So, we have Blackbeard right here. His fleet has been brought back to life because of the blood of the Promised One, who is Ash. Our lovely tour guide here is actually the one who made this all happen because he doesn't want to be a tour guide anymore. He wants to rule the city. Yeah, whatever. Like I said, lots of fun. This book is amazing. The artwork is, you know, it's a little on the stylized side, but it was still a lot of fun. I absolutely loved it. And of course, you know, lots of action, lots of crude humor, lots of violence. <laughs> but in the end, Ash does get the girl, which Ash always gets the girl. Two stories in this book. That was story number one, each done by different writers, each done by different artists. Second story here, we have the Graveyard Story, Cemetery Man. And it's just a bunch of college kids going into a cemetery during Halloween and getting drunk and having a blast. And they end up having a little seance and they all get overrun and taken over by demons and monsters and stuff. And of course, Ash comes and saves the day. Because <laughs> that's what Ash does. Absolutely amazing. Like I said, it's not highbrow. This is definitely of the lowbrow variety, but it's Ash. It's the Evil Dead. It's Army of Darkness. This book is a lot of fun. If it's your thing, I would totally say pick this up. And now next up for Marvel Comics, we have X-Men Red number nine. Now, I do, I, I like this Jenny Friesen cover. Really cool. She has a really interesting style to her. But the book, on the other hand, you know, it's this series started out really good, and I'm not sure what's happening to it. They're dragging on and on this whole Cassandra Nova story. It's been nine issues now. Cassandra Nova this, Cassandra Nova that. Oh no, now she has control of Rachel. Jean Grey, come and fight your daughter. I mean, it's... This book just bored me this week and I really really hate to say you know the only redeeming quality is Gabby I love Gabby and her lines in here were great other than that like I said just let this storyline die and continue on because now we have Jean Grey oh she wants to save Cassandra Nova and then all of a sudden Cassandra was like no and she's like all right you've made me dangerous I'm going to kill you raw it's like I said it was just boring it really really was I am so over this right now Continue on to something. Maybe they're just dragging it out until Uncanny starts or something. I don't know. So, you know, if you're not reading X-Men, this is one of those that I would just say, just skip and, uh, you know, wait till Uncanny starts. It really just was not worth it. 
All right, so that's that. But next up, from Dark Horse Comics, we have The Whispering Dark. Be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. This book is actually one I've been looking forward to. I read the synopses on this several months back. I even spotlighted it in one of my reviews, and it really did not let down. So here we have, at the very beginning, we have an army officer here. Her name is Hannah Vance, and she's talking with her father. All about going to war. And it, it, this book does have like a lot of faith-based uh, premise behind it, which was kind of interesting. So, and then she starts the, the entire, almost the entire book is just her monologue. There is a lot of dialogue here and there, but really it's her. And she went on a mission right now. She's supposed to be flying a helicopter in to uh, extract some rangers who are deep within Russia, essentially. Any aircraft fire starts and they end up being shot down. The next few pages, we just have a lot of them talking, trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do, how they're going to survive. They keep getting ambushed, and a few of them get picked off one by one until finally it just comes down to the uh, Hannah Vance ends up being the commanding officer because she is the last one in charge who's left alive so she's left making the decisions and this is something she said she's never wanted to do she just wanted to fly but here she is trekking through russia and then all of a sudden nuclear explosion i do not know where this story is go story is going but they're talking about a war and how it's just gone nuclear absolutely insane now this is supposed to be kind of a psychological thriller so it is a very smart read and it's supposed to be almost in the vein of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's In the Mouths of Madness. Really looking forward to seeing where this goes. This is just crazy fun and exciting so far. They're talking about these strange pills they're taking called Go Pills, which I'm, shooing, I'm assuming are almost like uh, amphetamines that are keeping them awake and keeping them alert. And... Hannah starts talking about how when she was younger, she shot a bird, but she's sure God would forgive her for that. But then she just killed a man and how God's not going to forgive her for this. And then she starts seeing demons. She's seeing her own men as demons. Like I said, I do not know what is going on here, but it really, really has my attention. And I'm excited to find out where this is going on. And then it ends right where it started. And it almost like her dad is Satan talking to her. Loved this. Absolutely loved this story. It was probably one of the best this week, if not the best. So this is definitely, this is one I would say run out and pick up. Recently, Dark Horse has really been just kicking it with all these great stories coming out. All of their burger books and everything else. Just amazing, amazing reads. Dark Horse has really taken it up a notch. And this is no difference, I would say, by this one. And now, next up... From IDW, Judge Dredd Toxic, number one. Judge Dredd, you gotta love Judge Dredd. He is just a serious, serious badass. And this was a really, really cool story. So this is Mega City 1, where, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the judges, but they are judge, jury, executioner. They follow the letter of the law to a T and enforce it on people. So they come across this weird person who seems to be the perfect human specimen currently. Now, the thing with this person is, is that he is what's called a scrubber. Scrubbers live, live beneath the city in an area that's, uh, what do they call it? The spill-off. The spill-off is where everybody's trash goes. And these scrubbers live down there. They've had their bodies genetically modified to live down there in this toxic poison and clean people's crap. But it leaves them horribly mutated. So why is it this one gentleman is like the perfect human specimen and can actually live with people in the above world and he's not mutated? Well, they find this strange little alien creature that is living in this guy's trachea and it seems to rewrite his genetic code, keeping him alive. Well, to Judge Dredd, this is an illegal alien specimen who should be gotten rid of. They start talking to some of the other people down in the Scrubber City, and they find out he wasn't the only one, that there's a lot of people down there. 
like these two people who use these little creatures to live longer and these creatures get a life. Really, really interesting concept. Uh, they were forced off their own planet, brought here against their will, and they just ended up bonding with these scrubbers. And uh, they're calling themselves the blenders now because they're blended with these things. So it's a totally symbiotic relationship. I believe if one dies, so does the other. All, all well and good until the crowd outside, who's seriously anti-alien, finds out about this and comes to destroy them and wants them all to die. Really, really good story. Really enjoying this as well. It's been a lot of fun. I, I enjoy Judge Dredd, though. Always have. He's a great character. Like I said, serious badass. If you're a Judge Dredd fan, I would say pick this up. Um, it's not one of the best stories I ever re read, but still, it was fun. So, you know, it does get a thumbs up from me. And next up, also from IDW, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Urban Legends number 6. Now, this is the... Uh, well, a remastered version of the original series that came out on Image many years ago. This is a very darker, much darker version of the Ninja Turtles. So, what do we have? After the end of the last issue, Splinter's gone. He was mutated even further, turned into a giant bat, and flew away. Poor Donatello is merged with a cyborg. And it looks like right here he's getting ready to blow his own brains off. He's merged with a cyborg. He fell out of a plane or helicopter. Completely shattered his shell, his spine. This dude was dead until a cyborg merged with him. Or at least the AI and the body of a cyborg. Raphael here got his face half blown off. He's actually wearing one of Casey Jones' masks right now. Well, it comes to find out that Donatello wasn't trying to kill himself. He was just trying to find out if his own weaponry can be used against him. Because he still doesn't know how to use this thing fully. So the turtles were like, hey, well, let's try it out. Why don't we do a little sparring match? So they do. They do a little sparring, although Donatello is very hesitant because there are times when the suit can take over and he has no say in it. And he's really worried about that. So, you know, they get on and they have their own little sparring match. And Casey Jones happens to stop by. And he thinks the cyborg is attacking his friends. So he jumps in. And the suit takes over, not realizing. Because Donatello doesn't want to fight back because it's Casey Jones. So the suit does take over and tries to kill, you know, pretty much everyone. Now, we skip forward here. Casey Jones and April O'Neil are married. They have a small child. Her name is Shadow, although it is Casey's from a previous marriage. Donat or uh, Liam Michelangelo tagged along because he's going to babysit because they are going out for the evening. By the end of the issue, though, poor little Shadow wanders out the door and goes missing while Michelangelo is asleep. Really, really good story. Like I said, I'm enjoying this a lot. This series was never finished at Image Comics. It is going to be completed. They brought back the original writer, the original artist, who will be finishing out the story arc with three more issues at the end. So, really, really excited for that. And I never read this when it was over on Image, so this is a lot of fun for me. This is one that I would say it's a good read. Pick it up. And now, next up from Dynamite Comics, we have Mars Attacks, issue number one. I love this cover. This thing is amazing. It's so gorgeous. Mars Attacks. So much fun. This thing's been around for a long, long time. I love how Dynamite Comics has been picking up these older properties and uh, revamping them and putting out new issues and new stories. It's so much fun. We start off with our friend here. His name is Spencer, and this is his dad, The Major. He's visiting his dad in a nursing home where his father is staying and they're going about this whole thing where you know the son's a big disappointment and dad's like yeah whatever just you know meh not realizing outside the mars invasion has happened <laughs> the artwork in here is a little on the cartoony side but bear with it it really fits this type of story because mars attacks is just really it is it, again it's crass over the top humor really a lot of fun we have the doctor who just comes walking on in and asks his dad if he wants a lethal dose of pentobarbital to kill himself. And the dad's like, what? What the hell are you talking about? And he's like, oh my God, you guys haven't seen it, have you? And he shows them the Mars invasion. And he tells them there's plenty of drugs for to kill everyone in the place, even if his son wants some just to be over and done with before the aliens take over. This is amazing. I love this. I mean, the humor in this thing. 
Like I said, it was really, really over the top. I love this. You know, we have little Shirley here in her wheelchair. It's the end of the days, Major. We're all going to die. And he's like, you're a bingo cheat, Shirley Watson. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. What made me laugh even harder is when they all go outside. And the aliens are attacking. And here comes Shirley. Oh, God, everyone's dead. It's like a nightmare. And they said, shut up, Shirley. And then she gets incinerated. <laughs> I... Loved that. I was not expecting it, but then we got our little aliens over here. Oh, that was so much fun. Puts his dad into a wheelchair and, or in a wheelbarrow and takes off. And then we have next up, the entire city is burning, and we have the president with his daughter. So much fun. It's Mars Attacks. I mean, you can't expect much because it is Mars Attacks, but still expect just fun. It's a fun story. So from me this week, that is another thumbs up. And then next up from Aftershock Comics, we have Dead Kings number one. This is another story I've really been looking forward to. It looked crazy. We start off here with this young woman who is giving birth to a set of twins. Okay. And I'm reading this and then she's telling them to shush that they're close but not some. I'm like, what is close? What's going on out here? Flip the page. We got giant robots fighting. Not only do we have giant robots, we got giant robot bears. <laughs> what more can you ask for in life? This is called the Iron Wars. Fast forward 20 years, I believe, and we have that the Thrice Nine, which is, you know, it's a little hard to find out what the Thrice Nine is. The story was a little on the rough side to read. Well worth sticking out, though. The Thrice Nine was actually the remnants of the Empire of Rus. Uh that have now been pretty much collapsed. So we have this gentleman who left the Thrice Nine, and what is his name? His name is Sasha. And Sasha is venturing out into the world to find a woman, this woman right here, Maria, or they call her Stone Mary. Now Stone Mary is supposed to be a hero of the Thrice Nine. And she's looking for him, or he's looking for her, because he wants someone to help him save his brother. And this was really, really good. I started really enjoying it right about here. Mary gives him a place to stay for the night, takes him out, and there's this giant conversation of why he wants to save his brother. His brother's in an internment camp, basically. He really didn't do anything. The king of the Thrice Nine is now gone, leaving all these weird little gangs and stuff who kind of control the place and warlords. Oh, and here's... There's Stone Mary. There's Maria back in the day during the war. The Iron War. Really, really cool. Had a lot of fun with this. So days later, we have Sasha returning home. He has this plan to get into the prison where his brother is at, blow the place up, get his brother out. Doesn't really work out that way because he's stopped by these roaming gangs who ride these mechanical horses that have wolves or dogs heads that they adorn their bodies with. And they tell him that he's not going to the camp where his brother's at. He's going to a reprogramming camp. He's really freaked out by this, and now he has no idea what to do, and that's where it ends for us. I'm really hoping uh, Mary shows up in the next issue, but by the cover it looks like she is, because she seems like she's going to be kind of a badass. Like I said, it was a little on the rough start, but once you get into it, it's a good story. This was actually really neat. Um, it's Like I said, it's a little hard to follow in places, but still well worth the trip. It is Aftershock, so I'm sure it's only going to be five issues, maybe at the most. So I am looking forward to this. Thumbs up from me this week. And now, also next from Aftershock, Baby Teeth number 13. Now this is Donny Cates. Everything Donny Cates lately, everything he's touched has turned to gold. I've been following this series since issue number one, and it really has not let me down. It's a great story. I love where it's going. So we have our little child mom here. Her name is Sadie, who gives birth to what we believe is the Antichrist. <laughs> a few issues back, he got sucked into the Red Realm with his Aunt Heather. Sadie and her dad found another one of these Antichrist children, and his mother and this kid can open a portal to the Red Realm. He opens it for them. They go in, and now they're here to save him. They want to get her son. She's here to get her baby Clark back. Time moves a little differently in the Red Realm, where Clark is still aging normal, but his Aunt Heather is aging really, really fast compared to the outside world. And then we have our nice little 
demon raccoon thing from the first couple issues who popped up and his name is Marty and he is here also to help this child. They are here. Demons start coming after them. They're trying to figure it out and I love this awesome chimera thing. Shark, spider, scorpion. And this is the mount of Clark's father who happens to be Satan. They have a funny name for it. They call it the Destroyaladon. <laughs> I love that. And yes, this is the goddamn devil. Awesome, awesome story. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Heather shows up to take out the devil. Her dad throws him. I love this. Hi, dad. Can you stop crying? Give me a gun so I can kill the devil. And he's like, good girl. He throws a gun at her. <laughs> you gotta love that. But the other boy, who was supposed to be one of the Antichrist children, grabs Clark and tells them he won't hurt me, and he holds the kid up. And the devil's like, oh my god, I have a son. And then they actually show you Satan at the end. No idea where this story is going right now. This should be a lot of fun. And I love this cover for the next issue. I believe there is the first trade out that might encompass the first, I don't know, maybe seven or ten issues. Definitely worth picking up. This story arc is really kicking off to be pretty good. I'm very, very excited about it. This has been a must read since issue one, so this is totally a no brainer. I don't even have to say it. And next up, from IDW slash Black Crown, we have Lodger number one, and this is written and drawn by the Laphams. Now, David Lapham and Maria Lapham. David Lapham is the creator and mind behind Stray Bullets. If you've never read Stray Bullets, you should be reading that. Read it, read it, read it. There are a ton of trades out. You can totally pick it up. That story's been going on since the 90s. It's an absolutely amazing read. So I was expecting a lot from this book. And I gotta tell you, I was not let down. This was so good. It is very wordy and also very hard to read, but wow, did it really, really kind of kick in. So we start here with our little friend Carla. She's in bed, she's very sick. We have what seems to be her husband named Carl, who then proceeds to smother her. You're, oh, yeah, that's how you start a story. All right, <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Next we have, and the entire, all this dialogue in black all around here, you come to realize is a review off a travel website. It, they call it The Lodger on here, but it's kind of like, I don't even know what's some I mean, travel loss, not travel loss, but there's some travel blog sites people go and they put reviews of different hotels and things like that. We have this woman here, her name is Ricky. She's 18 years old and she is following what appears to be one of these little reviews, visiting all the places and meeting all the people. And as she's traveling along, she keeps running across dead bodies. I mean, people, these are just dead. And she's coming armed, so she seems to have some information that nobody else has. She runs across the cops. Ricky Toledo is her name from Elroy, Arizona. Black and white artwork really lends to the story. It just makes it kind of more, I don't know, I don't want to say ominous, but it is a little dark. Absolutely love this. The dialogue in the story is very believable. You can see the banter happening. Here's Ricky trying to get away from the cop because they actually want to keep her overnight. And as she's wandering along, she finds out this little hunchback here, this little guy, slipped her a note. And he's our killer. This guy, by the time you get to the end of the book, you realize that this dude is a serial killer. And he looks really old here. But by the time he goes to the bathroom and he's having some kind of weird choking, sneezing, coughing fit, this is how he comes out. I don't know what is happening here. You come to realize that the travel blog she is, or the travel review she is following, is the serial killer's travel blog. And uh, 
the serial killer is kind of leaving little notes and clues of all the people he's killing in this travel review. Crazy, crazy stuff. She said she's been following him for years trying to stop this guy. You come to the last page here. And you realize that this guy, he supposedly had killed her parents. I, I don't even know where that's coming from, but wow, seriously, what a twist. Absolutely amazing. I love David Lapham. You cannot go wrong with this guy. This is going to be a fun, fun read. And if you're not reading Stray Bullets, I would really, really recommend that as well. It's still being printed to this day through Image Comics. He printed it years back on his own imprint called El Capitan. Really, really good stuff. All right, so let's do a quick recap here. We got The Lodger. The Lodger does not let down. This is a great story. Like I said, it's a little tough side to read. Totally worth sticking with it, though. Thumbs up. Baby Teeth number 13, Donnie Cates. This man is golden. Golden. You cannot go wrong with anything he writes. Pick it up. Dead Kings number one. Wow, I don't have any idea where this story is going, but it has me intrigued. Another one I would say really, really worth getting. Mars Attacks, number one. Goofy, over-the-top fun. Always going to have crass humor. If that's your type of thing, this one is a must-read. Ninja Turtles, number six, Urban Legends. Now, this here... I'm loving this take on the Turtles. I am a massive Turtles fan. I've loved them since I was a kid. So to see this kind of, you know, sort of alternate universe, because this story is considered not canon anymore, it's kind of fun to see it, especially this darker image of Ninja Turtles. Judge Dredd, toxic number one. I'm liking where this is going. I'm loving the art. I'm loving the dialogue. Everything is a thumbs up for this book. And then we have Whispering Dark number one from Dark Horse Comics. This is another one. It was a great read, a little on the tough side, but I like those kind of books. They keep me challenged. This one here is probably my story of the week. It even beats out Lodger by just a tiny bit. I'm loving everything that's going on in this book right now. So this is a must read. Then we have X-Men Red number nine. This one here was the dud of the week for me. <clears throat> I wish it it would do something different. Just go in a different direction. I mean, this is really not doing it for me right now. So thumbs down. Last but not least, Army of Darkness Halloween special. It's Ash. Come on, it's Ash. It's Army of Darkness. It's Evil Dead. You got Deadites. You got the chainsaws. You got the boomstick. You can't go wrong. Great read. All right, so I started with Whispering Dark number one. Like I said, this was my story of the week. Now my cover of the week, are you ready for this? Dun, dun, dun. Lodger number one, Bill Sinkevich Retailer Incentive cover. Ha ha, I surprised you there. This is cover B for Lodger. Now this one here, I believe it's either a one in 10 or a one in 25 for this book. Right now, this book is a little on the hot side. It is very, very hard to find. I really think it was under ordered, so I would recommend if you see this book, definitely pick it up. I went shopping this morning for it, and uh, I mean, Midtown was sold out already. I saw one copy on eBay, and it was coming out of the UK, and it cost like 40 bucks. So definitely, definitely, definitely worth picking up. Like I said, Midtown was sold out. I did find it on Gmart, which is where I ended up grabbing it. So um, they might still have some copies if you're interested. Anyway. Those are my books for the week. These are my opinions. Your mileage may vary. So guys, thank you so much. You're incredibly awesome. I love all the likes, the comments. You know, let me know what your favorite book was this week, even if it's one that I did not review. I love reading new stuff. As you can see, it was really, really indie heavy. One Marvel book, no DC. Really shocked me. Still, lots of good stuff. Like always, guys, Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. If you're new to my channel, hit that little CB down in the lower right-hand corner. Hit that little bell up in the upper right-hand corner. Let's you know when all my new stuff's coming out. And like always, thank you for watching and take it easy.